and welcome to another episode of the Amazon Unfiltered Podcast. Today we have Sean Kinney on the show. Sean Kinney is the head of Amazon Advertising at Fulton Imports, where he leads the advertising team that manages eight brands and spends around $2.5 million on PPC per year. Sean, I'm super excited to have you on today. Thank you. Perfect. So today's episode is all about numbers, data, and reporting. So Sean, I know since you manage so many brands and you have a team that works under you, you are probably pretty experienced in this space. I'd like to start off by getting your opinion on what the basic reporting setup for sellers should be. Like what numbers should they track? Um, how often do they track this stuff? What are some important reports to pull? What does that look like at your company? Yeah, sure. Um, so for us, uh, probably the most important uh reports that we pull from an advertising perspective would be like our search term reports for both sponsored products, sponsored brands, um, targeting reports, placement reports. Um, placement especially has been something that we have focused on more heavily recently, um, really trying to track our trends as to um, where we're showing in relation to competitors and um, really gaining more weight to top of search placements when it comes to trying to rank within certain categories. Um, we also use uh, softwares um, in order to do some reporting. Um, and with that as well, we're able to see the Amazon marketing stream. And so using that data to track that um, information at an hourly level um, and kind of looking at our search term report, what our uh, tacos or ROAS cost per click might be, and then also analyzing that uh, hour to hour in order to make better decisions and uh, do some day parting in order to uh, better uh, use our spend um, in terms of uh, what our strategies might be for each campaign. Right. What are like the most important numbers, trends, or metrics you're looking at? Yeah, um, I would say our number one, obviously, as it is for most sellers, is ROAS. Uh, and so really there you're just seeing how uh, much you're getting back on what you're spending um, as well as click-through rate uh, conversion rate um, those are kind of the two keys to when it comes to ranking products and so if you have a high click-through rate you're going to start um, getting a higher uh, sponsored rank as long as you're bidding higher um, when you have a high conversion rate um, you're really helping that organic um, rank go up and so um, trying to ensure that those two numbers are staying positive and staying above average. Uh, we're kind of tracking those week to week and making uh, a lot of judgments based upon that. And that's kind of how we uh, determine where to scale our bids and comparing those bids to our CPCs. All right. What are some big red flags, I guess, in those actual reports? Like um, maybe some of the first couple of things that you look at as soon as you receive them, you're just like, hey, like if this pops up, or if these numbers are at this level, then I know something wrong is going on. Yeah, sure. Um, anytime that pretty much try to stay above like a 9% conversion rate on most of our terms. So if we see that um, trending lower, and obviously we might not be uh, bidding into uh, the top of search where it's very competitive, um, that's something that we want to monitor. Um, anywhere where we have a low ROAS. Um, so obviously for some campaigns, we might um, have a lower ROAS if we're going after highly competitive or very broad uh, keywords. Um, however, if I have like a campaign that has a lower bid uh, with a long tail keyword that has a very low ROAS, um, maybe that's a keyword that I want to negate. Um, and so trying to find those differences and also watching how um, those numbers trend week to week. Obviously, as any business owner or Amazon seller would know, like time is of the essence. And so if we're able to identify a trend that like say, um, hey, our ROAS has been declining over the past four weeks on this keyword, what's going on? What's happening with our bids? Maybe competitors have started to um, bid higher. Maybe there's new entrants in the space. Um, maybe something is wrong with our listing. Like let's go in a see where our pricing is, um, as that obviously has a direct impact on our ad metrics. And so um, being able to identify those metrics quickly has been something that we have really uh, benefited from. What does the actual like 
I guess, process look like? Do you have, I guess, certain reporting tools or using the APIs? I know you mentioned you use marketing stream. Do you have like certain, mm-hmm. like, I guess, Google sheet or Excel sheet, like formats that you have VAs fill out for you? Like, what does it actually look like? Yeah, so we're using uh, twofold. Um, we're using uh, software. So we use uh, Jungle Scout Cobalt for reporting. And so we're able to um, manipulate and easily label and display certain uh, campaigns or certain product lines of ours um, quickly and be able to analyze multiple campaigns for a specific listing. Um, so that's pretty helpful. And then we also do use the Amazon API. Um, and we're pulling that data into uh, BigQuery, and then that's manipulated and uh, brought into Google Sheets, where we can, again, look at advertising for a specific SKU. Uh, we might be able to look at certain campaigns and how they're trending over time. And we're using uh, virtual assistants in order to manipulate some of that data. Um, and then we're bringing it into uh, what we're calling the advertising tool. Um, in-house in order to quickly gauge um, not only the advertising data for a specific SKU, but also what our inventory level is, how uh, advertising has been performing, um, what our tacos is overall for that SKU. And then from there, we're going in and making specific campaign optimizations, or maybe um, we're working with our in-house marketing team in order to uh, make strategy shifts that would better benefit a product or improve its rank or improve sales. Yeah, that makes sense. What are some of the bigger reporting mistakes that you've seen other sellers make? Um, I think the biggest one that people kind of fall into at times, and I mean, throughout my journey on Amazon, which started in 2015, um, it's kind of overcomplicating things. So Sometimes people try, just try to pull like every report and they're looking at so much data that they kind of miss the fact that like, hey, if you're really optimizing here, what you're doing is lowering your bid. Low, so um, you don't necessarily need to look at uh, like this targeting report. Like that targeting report is great when it comes to identifying like, hey, how can I better control my spend? Can I take... Uh, spend away from a auto campaign and move it into a manual campaign and exact match where I know like, Hey, this is, this isn't going to turn into six other different things. Um, but I think, uh, for the most part, like you can pull your search term report, you can pull a bulk file and be able to make, uh, adjustments within Excel that will really, um, be able to boost your business. Uh, however, Um, it's really easy to kind of fall into some of those pitfalls and just kind of bring in so many data points that you're not even sure like what exactly to pivot off of. Yeah. And unfortunately, I've actually seen the opposite to be true as well in some cases. You're speaking before we actually hit record about Mm -hmm. Amazon letters and companies who sell on Amazon. And, you know, if you're just like a one-man team or a guy and his like wife or a woman and her husband or whatever else it is, and a couple of VAs, like you guys are probably not tracking your numbers as well as you should be. Because I've spoken to starters doing seven figures and even starters like close to eight figures. You don't even know like what their numbers are. It's mostly the smaller starters, but like people show up to calls and I'm like, hey, what's your ACOS? Like safe, I really don't know. You know what are you going to spend this month? Safe, I really don't know. You know. What's your margin on this product? Safe, I really don't know. And it's just like, you know, if you're not going to get your numbers right, it's just not going to work out because you can't really plan accordingly and you can't like make you know certain advertising budgets. You can't forecast what your sales are going to be like. You're not going to be able to hire the right people. You just won't be able to grow your business right. So I think reporting in general is a super big issue for Amazon sellers, whether it's like over complication or under complication. Yeah, I would say to that point as well, like um, I work uh, at Fulton with a team of virtual assistants that help us uh, do advertising. And one of the biggest benefits, um, when it comes to reporting has been, um, properly using naming conventions. And so sellers that don't necessarily have naming conventions on their campaigns, especially when you start growing and scaling your business and you start having, let's say seven different campaigns for one SKU, 
um, it becomes much more difficult to grasp like what is the strategy of this campaign rather than if you have the proper naming convention set up um, it's much more easy to say like hey this campaign is doing conquesting um, we're going out and trying to find different ASINs that we can compete against um, and I know that the ROAS of this campaign is going to be lower than the ROAS of this sponsored products campaign that I'm running. Um, and like, if you don't have that in place, like it's, it's going to slow you down when it comes to your decision-making process. And like we've already said, like time, uh, is so valuable to, uh, so many of us that, um, that is a huge, huge benefit that you can do. Yeah, that's very true. So let's assume that you have all of your reporting set up, you know, and all the naming mm -hmm. done right. You have your portfolios, you have everything. How do you actually run an audit? I know you mentioned earlier that you do a weekly audit. So what does that look like? And I guess, what are some of the key insights you uncover? Yeah, so we're pulling in like all of our campaigns into um, software um, and reviewing uh, how our campaigns metrics are trending. So primarily looking at um, what our cost per click is, is that going up or down? Um, what is that in relation to our ROAS? Um, what is that in relation to our price and how has that affected our conversion rate or click through rate? Um, we track, uh, through software as well. Like has the main image on this item changed? Um, is that now driving a higher click through rate? Did we change the campaign creative and is that driving a higher click through rate and taking some of those observations and then also being able to use them throughout, um, different, uh, uh campaigns has benefited us. Um, and like you uh, mentioned earlier, we're using Amazon marketing stream, um, and kind of tying that into some of the placement data, um, looking at the daily placement. So tracking that trend, uh, day to day throughout the week, um, in order to, uh, see, Hey, how many impressions are we gaining within the top of search? And, um, is that number going up or down? Do I need to increase my bid to remain competitive within this specific keyword within this category um, or are we fine accepting uh, higher ROAS within other placements and I need to make sure that that number is maintaining constant um, throughout the week um, and then really just kind of tracking how our ROAS is trending um, so obviously if I see like uh, campaigns within different strategies that um, the ROAS isn't where it needs to be or it's trending um, in the wrong direction, then I can quickly flag those products and bring them into a easy to use dashboard where uh, we have lists and can quickly filter to say, hey, I need you to um, attack these 15 campaigns uh, today. And so then we can have a virtual assistant or myself go through and re-optimize those campaigns for a better return on ad spend. What are some of the more interesting or significant things that you've uncovered in these audits before or any of the brands that you've managed? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things in the past year that we've uncovered, especially using Amazon Marketing Stream, um, is being able to successfully day part in order to gain a higher ROAS. Um, I think when we first started, we might have had campaigns that like, let's say, uh, we were just kind of, uh, spending at throughout the entire day, or maybe we would spend in the morning and kind of exhaust budgets on certain campaigns. Um, not really paying attention to the fact that, uh, our cost per click was really changing throughout the day based upon like the number of people shopping or the fact that our competitors budgets were being exhausted within a certain period of time. So um, there's definitely areas where um, we can kind of outlast some of the major players per se um, and be able to capture high shopping periods while seeing a much better performance in ROAS than we were, let's say, a year ago. And so that has been something that we've really um, been able to capitalize on. And then also um, when it comes to tracking like our product pricing and average order value, um, really trying to track like our cost per acquisition and seeing like, hey, where is that trending to the point where 
our margins on these products are really being impacted from advertising? How can we get smarter to um, better spend and meet our goals for this specific SKU um, while expanding our margins a little bit? And what categories do you see they parsing through well in? Because I know there are certain categories just from the accounts that we have loaded on AI. Mm-hmm. Although like, you know, some people sell like B2B equipment and those people see almost no sales volume on the weekends and a lot yep. more sales during the weekday and during working hours. So obviously, day parting makes a lot of sense. You know, someone might sell like coffee that could convert a lot better in the morning. I'm just like making this stuff up. I'm just assuming at yep. this point could convert a lot better in the morning than I would at night and something like sleeping gummies or sleeping supplements could convert a lot better at night. Are there specific categories that do super well for you guys or is it just everything? No, I definitely would say that there are certain categories. So for example, we sell in the like home improvement category and um, sell a lot of like hardware related products. And those definitely seem to do better. Um, Either some of them are more B2B, like you mentioned, and definitely do do better during the week. But there's other ones that let's say you're going to remodel your kitchen and um, you need uh, different hardware or um, you're trying to match um, different colors and styles. And that's something that like most people might uh, tackle over the weekend. So we see like certain days of the week that definitely perform better, whether that's like Thursday, they have that prime shipping, they'll get it on Saturday or they'll get it on Friday. Um, so they're trying to purchase before that time period, but then also like, um, toys and games is a category that we sell in. And, um, we've seen like, uh, very interesting data when it comes to, uh, when people are shopping, um, to probably many business owners demise, we notice that there's a large shopping window from about nine 30 to eleven thirty in the morning. Um, and so trying to capitalize on that as well as really trying to focus in on um, times later in the evening when people are home from work um, and uh, browsing on Amazon, um, purchasing different uh, toys for their children um, or for themselves or whatever it might be. What does your actual day parting process look like? Because I know there are tools out there that just offer like completely automated day parting where they identify the peak and off peak periods and they change the bids. And then there are other tools that just set you say like, no, during this time period, bids go up that much. During that time period, they go down this much and so on. Then there are just people who just like change budgets and bids manually. Yep. Um, So the way that our day parting is set up, um, we are either reducing our bid when like, let's say we know uh, cost per click is going to be very high. Um, or we know like we might increase our bid when we know like ROAS um, typically uh, perf- has a better performance. Um, and so we are kind of scaling by the hour, um, either lowering or raising our bids by a certain percentage. So we might say, hey, my bid on this product is a dollar, but from 6 to 9 p.m., I want to make sure that my bid goes up by 100%. But from, let's say, 6 to 9 a.m., I want to make sure that I'm only bidding 50% of what my original bid was. And so we're taking our AMS data and um, pulling that into a Google Sheet. Typically, we'll build like a heat map of when we perform best at what uh, time of day. And then from there, we're kind of utilizing that data in order to build out that uh, matrix of the time of day and like what our bid percentage will be. That makes sense. How about forecasting? What about like, what, what are the most important numbers you guys forecast and what are some easy methods someone could get started with? Yeah, I think the biggest one that has aided us is um, we use software to do uh, budget pacing. Um, and so let's say, you know, uh, you have like a target budget or um, you are just looking to gain a better idea of where you're, going to be spending um, that you might be able to take to a manager or a company leadership. Um, And so it's something that has really helped us try to gauge not only how much we'll spend, like let's say over the course of a week or over the course of a month, but also when we're trying to stay within a certain uh, threshold for budget, um, like how many clicks 
based upon the current data that we're seeing, like what is that spend going to look like over the course of a month? Like what, and then from there, um, you can use that information to make adjustments to your campaigns. Um, maybe you need to um, scale your expectations or maybe you need to um, adjust your bids or um, lower or increase your targeting based upon um, the numbers that you're seeing. And right, now that I have like all my forecasts, my reports um, ready and I've done my audit, how do I actually produce growth? Like what, what are some strategies that work for you guys? Yeah, I think the biggest one, especially when it comes to like launching a product, um, is really keeping in mind like your uh, tacos of your product. Um, I think that uh, the more experienced Amazon sellers do a great job of this, but um, there's a bit more of a learning curve to those that are starting out. Um, typically, we like to stay within that like 10 to 15 percent range, um, kind of more than that. Uh, at times, it seems like you may be pushing too hard on the keywords that you're targeting, um, and it might like more so negatively impact the profitability of that product. Um, and when you're kind of underneath that threshold, um, it's a good indicator that like you have room to um, push on that specific uh, skew. And so really trying to weigh that and then also um, weighing like what your um, share of voices and really having a, like a clear expectation as to what the strategy um, for a product is. So if you know that uh, you're not seeing many sales because you don't have um, high visibility within a category, well, then obviously um, you need to rank higher for that uh, specific keyword within that category. So um, what we'll do is just look at how can we improve upon our click-through rate? How can we improve upon um, our conversion rate? And then also um, how do you weigh that overall with like areas that you might know that you need to be in? So for example, if you sold golf bags, probably the top keyword is going to be golf bag, which is pretty generic. But that more or less is going to be where most shoppers start their search. So you want to make sure that you have like high awareness for that term. But as they go throughout the, the shopping journey and really uh, refine their search, their end search might be a branded search for a specific type of golf bag. And there you really want to make sure that you have those uh, lower funnel strategies in place in order to capture them at the end of their journey while uh, building consideration across the way, um, whether that be targeting specific competitors or going after certain keywords. You mentioned before we hit record that you guys were doing around 1.5 million, I want to say, in spend last year. And this year you're yep. on hit 2.5 million. Like what, where's that extra million come from? Are those product launches or are you doing anything specific on the advertising side? Um, I think most of it, honestly, has just been the overall increase in cost per click in the categories that we sell in, um, as well as I think we've noticed a huge impact in the number of ad placements overall um, on Amazon and how much more competitive it has become. Um, obviously, from the time that we started to now, there's so many more Amazon sellers. Um, and so because of that, just competitive nature, um, more uh, more ad placements, as well as um, better utilization of the different ad types and uh, fuller funnel ad strategies to capitalize on um, the total uh, opportunity we have and all the SKUs that we sell. All right, I understand. That makes sense. Okay, so final question here. I know you are the advertising team lead. So I'm curious, like, how do you actually structure your team? Like, are you hiring VAs, service providers, full-time employees? And how do you know, like, which ones to hire first or what are, like, the key hires to make in your opinion? Yeah, I think, um, especially when it came to starting out, like, it was super beneficial to have um, softwares that allowed us to um, do, like, basic uh, market share analysis, keyword research, 
Um, obviously now from Amazon, you can gain some of that with like brand analytics and search query performance data. Um, but then obviously we're using um, some PPC software. Um, but then I also work with a team of like VAs and kind of without them, I wouldn't really be able to um, perform at the level that we are currently at. Um, as well as we have a data team uh, that's constantly helping us um, doing some of that big query analysis, helping us build some of our tools that we're doing some of this reporting in and that data manipulation. So really having those data analysts has been um, a huge help um, to our team. Um, and then we're, we're spread out across multiple teams at Fulton. So we have marketing team, sourcing, inventory, um, operations. And so um, really all of those teams have to work together and have a strong communication in order to kind of have this like living organism that is our organization that um, presses forward and is co constantly uh, pushing each other to scale for growth. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing all the other information you did in this episode. Where can our listeners find out more about you? Yeah, um, I can be reached on LinkedIn. That's probably the easiest place to find me online. Perfect. Thank you so much for coming on. Yep. Thank you, Dave.